Here's a case where it uh, came up. The Capolino case. Case was Dr. Carl and Carmelita Capolino. They are real people. Their names are actually real. Sounds like it's a children's storybook, like Carl and Carmelita went to the park to have a picnic. And Carl said to Carmelita, Carmelita, can you pass the potato salad? And Carm no, they're real people. Carl and Carmelita. Sounds like it comes from Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Grandpa Joe and Grandma Josephine and Grandpa George and Grandma Georgina. Well, anyway, these are real people. Carl and Carmelita first lived in New Jersey and they moved to Florida. Now, enough they moved to Florida, Carmelita was found dead. And Dr. Carl, he gained $65,000 in an insurance policy. Okay, that's uh, not really that suspicious because people do have insurance policies. But what made people a little suspicious is that within a month, he married somebody rich. As if this guy is really looking for money. He met a rich person called Mary Gibson. That raised a few eyebrows, but it was only when someone called Marjorie Farber. She was from New Jersey before he moved to Florida. She was his New Jersey neighbor. She was not happy that he married Mary Gibson. She actually wanted him to marry her. But anyway, she claimed that her husband, her husband, Mr. Farber, had died because of a poison Dr. Carl had given her. She injected her husband, and Dr. Carl finished the job by suffocating Mr. Farber. When she said this, then people started asking questions. They decided to open the cases, and they exhumed the bodies of Carmelita and Mr. Farber, but Mr. Farber, they didn't find any poison in him. Oh, then again, trace amounts that'll be found in him, and it was quite some time since he had died. But his body did show signs of strangulation. He was murdered. He did not die of natural causes. They couldn't prove anything from Dr. Carl, because anyone could uh, strangle somebody. So in New Jersey, he was acquitted. What about in Florida? What about Carmelita Capolino? That's when they started the case to the murder of Carmelita. Now, the fact is that he, being a doctor, he had access to this poison called cesicinocholine chloride. He had access to it, you know, being a doctor, and that's what he used. And they had a new test for succinic acid. And they found succinic acid in Carmelita's brain. The idea is that succinocholine chloride would produce succinic acid. And if you find succinic acid, it must have been she had the poison in herself. Now, this is a new test. Was it valid? Was it admissible in court? Now, the lawyers on Carl Coppolino, Dr. Carl, they said it's a new test. It's not well established. You can't use it. It'd have to be well established. So, can it be used? Now, the answer was yes, it could be. The line used that society does not have to tolerate homicide. It doesn't have to exonerate people just because you didn't have enough people writing articles about it. You don't have to wait two or three years or four years for people to start writing articles in medical literature for it to be established if it actually shows the truth. And here are the two molecules. Here's the poison right here. And here's the succinic acid, which they found in the body, which seems to have come from there. Now, anyone who knows a little bit about organic chemistry would look at these two and say, oh, come on, it's obvious. This is an acid catalyzed ester hydrolysis of this poison to do this. It's very easy. It happens all the time. It's just an ester hydrolysis. Of course, this produces this. This was shown in court, and therefore they said, yes, the scientific principles are valid. You can admit this, even though the test for succinic acid was a new one. So he was found guilty. 